Okay, let us continue with this content. The next thing that we are going to look at is the key technologies. So, as you can see here, WDM system key technologies are into four. So, it is the optical source, the optical amplifier, optical multiplexer and demultiplexer and also the supervisory technologies. So, this combination of these four technologies actually develop and provide the best WDM system that we could provide. So, let us look at this. The requirement of optical source where your beam is actually coming in. So, the first thing is we need to have large dispersion compensation value and also we need to have a standard and stable wavelength. So, let us look at here the first one. This is the modulator. So, usually this modulator is known as direct modulator where the LD the laser diode that comes in where your signal is actually modulated and transmit out. The next one a bit improved version is the EA external modulator which works exactly the same except here your lambda is based on your ITUT standard. And then we have the next one which is the Mark Zander external modulator where your service is the same thing like your EA just now but except here your current is modulated differently. So, then we have the coherent modulator which is now a very famous one together with the 40 gig coherent technology and 100 gig coherent technology. So, how does it work? Here the polarization beam actually split your signal into two polarization which is your X pole and Y pole as you can see from here. And then the moment it goes out this combiner actually combines this two modulator signal on the X and Y pole and then in the same fiber and then transmit out. So, this gives the capacity of us to increase our lambda level up to 40 to 100 gig as per lambda. And then this is the comparison between all the modulators. So, since here you can actually see the direct modulator and the compensation value on the dispersion compensation, you can see it is much more smaller here 1200 all the way to 4000, but compared to coherent modulator which is 40,000. So, from there you can also re realize that the price for sure it is more expensive. So, the Mark Zender and coherent modulator are very much expensive compared to any other two modulators. And on the wavelength stability you can actually see it gives you the best stability on the Mark Zender modulator and also your coherent modulators. So, let us look at the optical amplifier now. So, amplifiers are two, there are two amplifiers. The first one is erbium duped fiber amplifier and the second one is Raman amplifier. So, basically your amplifier is divided into three, either you have boost amplifier, line amplifier or pre amplifier. So, let us look at each one of them. In this case, this is the concept of erbium duped fiber amplifier where your erbium is actually energized when your light pumped in at the 980 nanometer. So, you can actually see that it is booped and then at the E 3 excited state over here and then you decay at E 2 meta and then your 1550 actually comes in and all the way out. So, to simplify this in a different form, the structure of EDFA will look exactly like this, where your photon detector is situated before your isolator, so that your signal that comes in actually pumped up all the way to out. So, let us see, these are the features of EDFA. So, we have advantages and disadvantages. So, the advantages are very much here. The consistent with the low attenuation window with the high energy conversion efficiency. So, it gives you a very high energy conversion efficiency and also it gives you a very high gain with the little crosstalk besides it also gives you a very good gain stability. But we also have some disadvantages as you can see it is a fixed gain range it means the range is fixed you cannot change at any point of time and it also gives you a gain unflatness. Flatness is very important in our NGWDM environment and it also gives you the optical search problem because of the amplification. So, let us look at the next one on the automatic gain control. So, here you will realize that the gain over here is basically no change and then it transmits all the way out with your lambda. So, let us look at the Raman amplifier. So, Raman amplifier is a bit different and it is slightly a bit expensive compared to any other amplifier. So, you have a pump signal that is coming in and then there is a gain actually pumped on the other way and then the entire signal is pumped up to have a better gain. So, here we also have some advantages and disadvantages on the Raman amplifier. So, if you look at here 
it gives you a flexible gain wavelength and it's a simplified structure. It also gives you a nonlinear effect that can be reduced and very low noise. But the disadvantages are, you can look at here, it gives you a very high pump power with low efficiency and high cost. And the components and fiber undertake the high power. And of course, it comes with a higher price. So let's look at here. These are the application of OA, of the optical amplifier. So we have booster amplifier, which is at the beginning of your FIU, before you transmit out. You also have line amplifier, which is in between where we talk about OA, optical amplification. And we also have pre-amplifier, that is before it actually gets into the equipment. So the optical multiplexer and demultiplexer is the next topic that we want to look in. This is very important because this is part of our chassis in our OSN equipment. So we have two types of multiplexer and demultiplexer. The first one is TFF, which is also known as thin film filter. Another one is known as AWG a rate waveguide grating. So all this state will be stated on the board, whichever board that support either TFF or AWG environment. So let's look at here. For thin film filter, your lambda flows in, your lambda 1 to lambda 4 flows in, and each lambda is segregated basically accordingly based on glass thin film filter. So well, let's look at the rate waveguide grating. So instead of using glass here, we are using waveguide to actually transfer our lambda forms. So basically, you can see here, all our lambdas are arranged in a sequence from 1 to all the way to n, and then transmitted out. So that's all about multiplexer and demultiplexer choosing. So let's look at the other technology, the last technology, which is known as supervisory technology. So we have two here. One is OSC, another one is ESC. So the OSC is actually referring to optical supervisory channel technology. And the second one is ESC, which is electrical supervisory channel technology. On this slide, let's look more in detail of the optical supervisory channel. So the basic requirement for this OSC is the operating wavelength should be different from the pumping wavelength of OA, which is your optical amplifier. The operating wavelength should also not take the 1310 nanometer windows. And it should be available when OA fails, and it's suitable for a very long distance transmission. So basically what we are trying to say is we are actually transmitting our OSC signal in a different path, in a different path, so that it does not interfere with the existing transmission of all the lambdas that is actually transferred. So the next topic on the electrical supervisory channel, in here is very much on we put the supervisory control data byte on the frame of our ODUK. So the features here is the simple structure and cost saving. It means we don't need to have extra fiber installed for us to transmit supervisory channel. It is carried together with the ODUK itself. And redundancy supported, basically we can protect each other on a different type of ODUKs in a two different path. It also improves power budget so that the flatness can be achieved. And the last one is to reduce system complexity so that there is no external board or extra carrier to be carried together with the lambda that we are going to transmit. So basically, electrical supervisory channel is recommended, but for a better, for a very long distance, we usually prefer OSC, which is optical supervisory channel.